God bless you, John the Great. I'd like to share with you today the gospel of Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ. You see, there are many people in this world that will call themselves Christian, but not everybody is born again. And you do not get born again by joining in some church or some religion in the hope that somehow this will make you right with God. You see, being born again is a supernatural work of God that takes place in your heart once you come to believe in Jesus Christ. You see, there are many religions in this world. And being a Christian, it's not about religion. We don't have religion. We have a relationship with God. We know Him. His Spirit lives inside each and every single one of us. And every sin that we have ever committed in the sight of God has been forgiven. Because Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach, paid for our sin. And when I put my faith and my trust in Jesus for the forgiveness of all of my sin, He completely cleansed me. He transformed me. He changed my heart. And he gave me his Holy Spirit and he brought me into a relationship with God where there is more love, more peace, more joy than I have ever known in my whole life. I don't have religion. I'm not striving with God to be perfect in the hope that somehow I can be good enough to go to heaven. I will never be good enough to go to heaven because God's standard is perfection and nobody in the whole world is perfect and so nobody is going to heaven based on what they do and God is holy and because of his holiness he could never let you into heaven in your sinful state and because of his righteousness he can't judge you based on who told a big lie versus who told a little lie and because of his justice he has given every man over to the class of Adam and Eve as all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. But because of his love for you, humanity, people, his, his creation, he came down in the person of Yeshua. God the Father sent his son into the world to die for you so that he could reconcile sinners back to himself. You see, once a year on Yom Kippur, the high priest could enter into the Holy of Holies with the blood of an animal. This was to demonstrate that the way into the Holy of Holies had not yet been made. You see, but when you come to believe in Yeshua, you say you're waiting for the Messiah to come and he's got to build the temple of the Lord, but you become the temple of the living God. You see, God promised the children of Israel that he would make a new covenant with you. He said that he would write his laws in your heart. He said that he would put them in your mind. He said in that day you would need no man to teach you saying, no, the Lord because you would all know him. And every covenant is made using blood. And the high priest had to offer up blood. And the Mashiach, who is to be a priest of the king, Zechariah 6, 6, Psalm 110, offered up himself. He shed his own blood for you, for the forgiveness of sin, so that you could have reconciliation and relationship back to God. Yes, sir. What am I doing? Well, that's okay. God wants me here, sir. And we must listen to man, not... We must listen to God, not man. You know that we don't like us, I love you. I love you so much. I love you. Do you know what? I see you as so special. You don't realize how special you are. God chose the Jewish people to bring forward the Messiah so that he could save his people from their sins. Not just the Jews, but the Gentiles as well. You see, God took Abraham. He was just one man, and he told him, go to a land that he didn't even know. He said that he would establish his covenant through Isaac. But you see, Abraham, he had a son through the slave woman, Ishmael. And so, but God promised to establish the covenant through Isaac. And it was through Isaac that Jacob, he begot Jacob, and Jacob, he begot Judah, and Judah begot David, and David begot Yeshua HaMashiach who came to save God's people from slavery to sin. You see, when you're born into this world, you're born a slave to sin. Just like Ishmael was born first, slave to sl he, was a, he came from the slave woman. You are born a slave to your sin. The first time you are born into this world, you are born a slave to your sin. This is why God promised you that he would make a new covenant with you. 
He said that he would write his laws in your heart. He would put them in your mind. He said in that day you would need no man to teach you saying know the Lord because you would all know him. You have to be born again. And being born again is not about joining some church, joining some religion. It's a supernatural work of God that takes place in your heart once you come to believe in Yeshua HaMashiach. God takes your stony heart, gives you a heart of flesh, and puts his Holy Spirit within you, and he reconciles you back to himself so that you have a relationship with him and not religion. We're not striving with God in the hope that we can be good enough to get to heaven. You see, God told you through the prophet Daniel that he would send the Messiah. He said the Messiah would come before the second temple was destroyed, that he would bring atonement for sin and everlasting righteousness. Jeremiah 23, 5 tells us that the branch shall be called the Lord our righteousness. When Yeshua takes away your sin, he gives you his perfect righteousness so that you're made right with God, not by what you do, but through faith in what Yeshua has done for you. You become a new creature. You are born again of the Holy Spirit. You have relationship with God. You do not have religion. Religion is from man. Every religion, whether it be Catholicism, Judaism, it doesn't matter. They added their own words to the God's old Leviticus system, but God abolished that system. He destroyed the temple in 70 AD. And he did this because the Messiah had come and he made atonement for sin and everlasting righteousness and through your faith in him, his, his blood cleanses you of all your sin. God did away with the old to establish the new. And it is written through the prophet Isaiah that the Jews would reject the Mashiach. And so God would turn his attention to the Gentiles. He told them through the prophet Jeremiah that he would make a new covenant with them where he would write his laws in their heart. He would put them in their mind. He said, in that day, you would need no man to teach you saying, know the Lord, because you would all know him. He told you through Zechariah that the uh, Messiah would be a priest and a king. Psalm 110, the Lord said to my Lord, sit at my right hand. You are a priest forever in the order of Melchizedek. You see, the Messiah had to come twice. He had to come to make atonement for sin so that he could reconcile sinners back to God. You say that the Messiah must come and rid this world of evil. But yet what you fail to understand is that every human being in the sight of the Holy God is evil as every human has sinned against him. And so if the Messiah was going to come without first making atonement for sin, then he would have to get rid of everybody. But God didn't do that. God took on flesh so that he could come and suffer and die in the place of sinners so that he could bring us into a relationship with himself. And you see that he's building the temple of the Lord. But this is not a building made by hands. Do you see the uh, Psalm 118 tells us that the stone which the builders have rejected has become the cornerstone. The temple of the Lord is not a building made by hands. It is comprised of God's people. You see, under the new covenant, God told you that he would take your stony heart, that he would give you a heart of flesh, that he would put his Holy Spirit within you. Only once a year, the high priest could enter into the temple, the Holy of Holies, with the blood of an animal to reckon to, for the sins of Israel. But this, when you come to believe in Yeshua, God takes your stony heart. He gives you a heart of flesh and he puts the Holy Spirit within you and he reconciles you back to himself. It is not about your religion. When Adam tried to sew fig leaves together to cover up what he had done, he was unable to undo the damage he had done. God took an animal and he covered his shame. But even then he had to leave the Garden of Eden. So if you think that you can just say tuba, that you can just repent and say sorry to God without having a blood atonement for your sin, then you are not obeying the law. Because Leviticus 17 verse 11 says that it is the blood which is the atonement for your soul. And so you have to have a blood sacrifice for your sin. And God did away with the old system 
when he told you through the prophet Daniel that he would make a new, that he, the Messiah would come before the second temple was destroyed and that he would bring atonement for sin and everlasting righteousness. And just, uh, we, we are under the new one now. Gentiles have been grafted into the new covenant. God has given it to the Gentiles because the Jews have rejected it. But you see, the Messiah came at the appointed time. He came before the second temple was destroyed. He brought atonement for sin. He brought everlasting righteousness. Jeremiah 23 tells us that the branch, the one that comes from his place to build the temple of the Lord, we're talking about the Messiah, is called the Lord our righteousness. You see, it is written that to us a child is born, a son is given, that his name will be Wonderful Counselor, Prince of Peace, Mighty God, Everlasting Father. Psalm 89 tells us that he will be God's firstborn, God's preeminent one, and that if his sons didn't, uh, if his sons transgressed his laws, then God would never forgive their rebellion. Then God would, sorry, God would visit their transgression with the rod. And that, and that he visited the transgression with the rod. He uh, crucified Yeshua HaMashiach. He died in your place. He died the death that you deserve. Because God is holy, he is not going to let you into heaven in your sinful state. And because of his righteousness, Isaiah 43, 28 tells us he's given everyone over to the curse. But because of his love for you, he can send his son into the world to die for you so that you could receive eternal life. Now, if you believe that Yeshua is Lord, that he died on that cross for your sin, was buried and raised on the third day, he will save you. God bless you.